everybody, this is Brandon from Sparksmith helping you see and be seen. Today we're going to go over how to wire up your rock lights if you want them to function as an actual switchback rock light with a white running light and an amber turn signal. Now the way these come from the factory, when you first open the box, you can see I've got a sample uh, harness here that we're going to use. It comes with battery input, the switch to go between white and amber, and then a single set of, or a single wire going to all eight outputs. So what that means is that this switch is designed to make the rock lights work on white on one part of the switch, one position of the switch, or amber on the other position of the switch. If you want them to work as a white and then flash amber with your turn signals, here's what you do. Okay, so if you're going to use your rock lights as an auxiliary turn signal, you're going to want to get one of our install kits. Um, you can get the 6 to 16 or 6 to 14 inch install kit. Uh, that'll lend you some aluminum strips if you need to use those for creating mounting brackets or whatever. But it's also, more importantly, going to give you the butt connectors and the wiring that you need to connect up to your factory turn signals. First thing you want to do is get everything laid out. Okay, your screws you can use later. You're going to need these butt connectors. The fuse tap, make sure you choose the fuse tap that matches the fuses in your underhood fuse box. If you're not sure, open up the hood, pop the fuse box cover off, and see what the fuse taps look like and match it to the picture that's in the listing. On the rock lights, what you're gonna do, as nice as this cable is, unfortunately, you're not gonna be able to use most of it. Um, you're gonna have to come in and just a pair of scissors or whatever wire cutters you got and cut off either the four or eight wires that you need. You can put this in your later bin, hopefully use it for something else on down the road. So now you've got your four outputs. We're just gonna do this as an example with a, a four rock light setup. So we've got our four outputs. What I would recommend first is to go ahead and mount your rock lights and route the wires up to wherever you're going to have this stuff. Typically, I will put it in the engine bay near the fuse box and the battery. Uh, whichever side that might be. Now, on some vehicles, it's driver's side, some vehicles, passenger side, wherever yours happens to be, that's where I'm going to make all this magic happen. Um, I say that to also say that when you route the wires for the rock lights, you want to make sure that they're going to reach all the way to wherever these are. So you have the opportunity to lengthen these to whatever length you need to meet the rock lights in case that wire is not long enough. So go ahead and mount the rock lights and route the wires to one common location so that you can take these and you'll screw them in and then you know how much wire you need from here to the other connections to make everything fit correctly. Okay, so once you've got these four cut, you've got your rock lights mounted and the wires routed to a common location under the hood or wherever you're gonna put them uh, for all four of these. And you've got them cut from the rest of the harness. There's three wires inside, um, a white, a red, and a black. And what you want to do is strip back a couple of inches of the outer insulation. Now, when you do this, it's important to not crimp too deeply into that outer sheathing because you don't want to nick the wires that are inside it and cause them to be exposed. So you cut away just a little bit. Um, sometimes a little razor blade or something is helpful. And you just kind of, once you've made the cut, you take that cable and you bend it just a full 180, kind of fold it over on itself. You can very carefully go in and you can see it started to open up there. And we're doing that just to try and make sure that we don't damage the wires and have exposed wire down here on the end. So get you a couple inches off of each one of these and then we'll splice them all together. Okay, so we've got all four stripped and the bare wire exposed on these so we can make our connections. One thing I'm going to do real quick is plug it into one of my rock lights and I've got my 12 volt power supply here. You can touch it to your car's battery or whatever. Just making sure that I've got my connections correct. So black is going to be ground and the red wire will be the white light and then the white wire will go to your turn signal outputs from the vehicle. So just verifying those, 
Next, what we'll do is let me unplug this and we'll come over. So here's kind of the reason we have to split these up like this and not use the standard harness is you want to have a left and a right. So what we'll do is the white wires will twist two of those together. So that will give you your left circuit and your right circuit. The rest of them can all go to one junction. So all four red wires and all four black wires can go together because they're going to be on that common circuit to turn the white lights on. And then ground, obviously, you need for both the white and the amber, but that's all a common circuit. So all four reds go together. And when I do this, I will usually, you can see what I'm doing here, we're just giving the wires a little twist. Um, it helps kind of bind them together. You want to do two at a time. That kind of helps keep things neat and organized and keeps them a little bit tighter. Um, and then once you've done the pair, you can twist the pairs together. And so at the end, you'll end up with four inputs. You got your red, all four wires for red, all four wires for black, which is ground, and then two separate white wire inputs, one for your left turn and one for your right turn. Okay, so once you've got your four inputs twisted together and ready to go, grab the bag of butt connectors, comes in that install kit. And these, you can see I'm just using like a basic crimping and stripping tool. It really doesn't take anything too fancy or expensive to have the right tools to do this kind of work. A um, couple of bucks at your local auto parts store, hardware store, it's a worthwhile investment. Um, but you want to crimp each of these four connections to one of our heat shrink uh, waterproof butt connectors. Once you crimp it, go ahead and give it a little tug and make sure that it doesn't pull out. And once you've done that, just repeat on the next three. Okay, next, now that we've got our four inputs ready to go, we're going to take our power wire and our ground wire. And we can go ahead and just strip off. These silicone wires are pretty simple to strip. Uh, again, I just like twist the wire a little bit and in this case I'll fold it over on itself to give the butt connector something to really crimp onto and then Same process you're gonna run red to red black to black and Yellow will use half the yellow for one side and half the yellow for the other side Okay, once you get your power and ground and one of the turn signal wires crimped into place you're ready to move over to the vehicle. You'll want to take the black wire first and wherever it is that you've got these mounted under the hood, more than likely there is a nearby spot with a factory ground. We'll go over on the truck and take a look and I'll show you what the factory ground looks like so that you can kind of have an idea of what to look for on your vehicle. It's always best to go to either the negative terminal of the battery or some kind of factory ground so you know you've got a good ground source because a lot of the problems with these products stem from a weak ground. Okay, so just as an example, this is uh, my 07 Silverado uh, Classic. This is on the back firewall. Um, so if you look back here, and you're gonna look for something similar to this where there's like a stud coming off of the bodywork that has a nut and some kind of wire going to it. Usually it'll be a, a couple of wires together. This just happens to be the ground strap um, from the engine to the firewall. But look for something like this, and that's gonna be a factory ground point. You know you're gonna get a good ground there. Plus it gives you the opportunity, if you've got an older vehicle, to take this off, clean it, make sure that it is in fact a good, clean, shiny metal kind of ground. So once you've found your factory ground point under the hood and you've routed this black wire from wherever this is to wherever the ground is, uh, then you know what length of the black wire you need for the ground. So go ahead and cut it to an appropriate length so you don't have too much excess kicking around under the hood. Um, and then you'll take the ring terminal that's included with these and crimp it on there. Now, the next part is power. And what you're going to want to do is take that red wire, just like the ground wire, you're going to route it from wherever this bundle is to your underhood fuse box. And what I recommend doing is 
routing it the shortest distance possible and keep it away, as I've always said before, away from anything that moves or anything that gets hot. Um, so route this wire over and then you'll know kind of how much of this to cut off because you're probably not going to need all 10 feet. Uh, I recommend cutting this blue butt connector off and stripping a fresh amount of wire and using our heat shrink butt connectors to, just like before, crimp both of them, give them a little tug, and then this will be your fuse tap. And we'll go over next how to identify what fuse you should use. So when you get, when you get to the vehicle, go ahead and find your underhood fuse box and you pull off the cover. Most covers will have some sort of guide to tell you what fuses are used for what circuits. Um, if you own a Ford, you're gonna need to consult your owner's manual because the Ford ones will just have a series of numbers in here and then the owner's manual will tell you what that number corresponds to. Now on this Chevrolet, uh, they do a pretty good job of just marking which ones are which. Um, there's one right here that says IGNE, 10 amp. So that's ignition power and it's a 10 amp fuse. So that one, just from experience, I know that that one comes on when you turn the key on. So that is what you'll use for the white daytime running light circuit on those rock lights. Now, obviously you could put that to a switch if you wanted to do a switch instead, completely up to you. That would just be a matter of routing the wire through the firewall and to the switch on the dash. If you wanted to come on uh, like a set of factory running lights or something, um, one way to do it is through this underhood fuse box and the fuse tab, because then you're not, it's that much less wire splicing you're having to do. Typically, what you're going to look for is something that will say like fuel injectors or auxiliary power, uh, something of that nature, something that only comes on when you have the ignition switched on on the vehicle. And of course, if you have questions about your specific application, feel free to email us support at sparksmith.com and we can address any questions you might have. One important thing to note, if you're going to use the fuse tap method, you pick the fuse that you want to use, remove the factory fuse, and put it into the lower slot of the fuse tap. Once you have two fuses in there, then you can take the fuse tap and install it into the factory fuse location. And now both of the, both the factory circuit and this circuit will have power at the same time. Okay, so in wiring up your turn signals, your factory wiring is gonna have something that probably looks something like this. Um, now this obviously doesn't cover every case and most vehicles are gonna have something a little bit different, but if your vehicle has a bulb that does both a park and a turn signal, like a low power function, a high power function, it's gonna have a three wire socket that should look something similar to this. Now typically, you'll have one outside wire is ground and the other outside wire is going to be your turn signal and the middle wire is going to be the low power parking light circuit. Um, so you can kind of identify these generally speaking by looking at which one of the three wire colors is common across multiple connectors. So if each connector has a black wire there's a very good chance that that's the ground or um, like on Toyotas it's always a white wire with a black stripe. Uh, that sort of thing. So, um, you know, there again, if you have conv concerns or questions about which wire color and what the plug looks like and all that, we can provide you that information when you go to install it. Uh, but once you identify which wire is your turn signal wire, you're going to cut it. And just as an example here, we'll say, you can watch this again on my wire splicing tutorial if you want to click on that one. Um, but you're going to end up with Your wire that you've cut and your wire that you want to splice in and so the factory wire just like before you're going to twist those two together so you've got the factory wire coming in and the yellow wire coming in and they'll both go into one side of that butt connector crimp it down nice and tight give it a tug to make sure it doesn't come out and then you'll take that and put it back onto the end for the connector. And crimp it, give it a little pull. And now you've got your turn signal wire spliced in or your 
turn signal input for the rock lights spliced into your factory turn signal wire. It's worth noting right here that if you have a factory setup and you're gonna wanna run like LED bulbs in your turn signals, right now, before you do what I just did, uh, it would be a really good time to go ahead and splice in a connection for your resistor that you're gonna need for that LED bulb. Since you've already got these wires cut right now anyways, it's one less buck connector that you'll have to have in your wiring, one less you know, chance for corrosion and that kind of thing. So go ahead, if you're planning on doing an LED upgrade on those turn signals, go ahead and splice that into this power circuit while you're doing it. Okay, so you've got your power, ground, and one of your turn signals run, and you've cut that yellow wire to the appropriate length that you needed. Um, you'll take the excess wire that's left over and just repeat the same process for the other set of white wires. You'll route those to your turn signal, and then you've got your left and right turn signals, your power, and your ground. And if you had done the rock lights already and got them routed into place, really the only thing left is to start plugging these guys in. Um, now I would recommend taking these, turn the vehicle on, not to start it, just turn the key on and activate either the left or right turn signal. And then you'll take the two that you know are for whichever side and then plug them into one at a time your new rock lights. And then as you plug them in, you should be able to verify that, okay, yes, the right blinker's on and my right rock lights are blinking. Um, then once you get those two, plug in the other two, make sure the blinker works on that side, and then test the running light as well. And you may have to do a little mix and match, but if you're slow and methodical about it, it's a pretty easy process to just plug these in. If you get it wrong, you just unplug it and plug it into the other one. Um, so that's sort of the, the simplified version of how to set these up as uh, switchback rock lights, um, power, ground, turn signal, um, you know, use these waterproof butt connectors. Make sure that after you've crimped them all on that you apply heat to these with even something like a, just a regular cigarette lighter will work. Uh, just be careful not to get the flame from the lighter too close to the wires. It will singe and burn them, which could cause damage. Um, but if you just apply it to the pink part of the butt connector, it'll shrink that up nice and tight and create a waterproof seal that'll keep these connections going for a long, long time. Um, on these connections, I would always recommend a little bit of dielectric dielect 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 grease in there just to help, again, prevent corrosion and make these things last as long as possible. Uh, so you got all your wires routed. Uh, take the zip ties that are included with that install kit, bundle everything up nice and neat, and make sure it's not touching anything that gets hot or anything that moves and you should be good to go. Test it all out before you wrap everything up. Make sure everything works. And as always, if you have any questions, just hit us up, support at sparksmith.com. We're always happy to help. Thanks for watching.